Hi everyone, welcome back to science. I'm Miss Catherine and today we're going to complete lesson 1.6 in our matter and energy in ecosystems unit. For lesson 1.6 today, here are the items that you will need. Always encouraged, but again optional, is that access to Amplify Online. And if you do have your model of your energy storage molecules from last class, it would be great if you had that in front of you because we will reference it today. And then as always, if you have a family member nearby or a friend on video chat that you can share ideas with, that would be great. Go ahead and pause the video and gather the items that you need. Just a reminder, as you are following along on paper, it is really helpful to always have in front of you not only your new work, but your past work, because scientists, we're always building on our ideas and we want to reference those important ideas and discoveries uh, that we figured out in the past as we work to move forward and add to those ideas. If you are online today, here is your click path to get to lesson 1.6 called Examining Data of, from the Biodome. And once again, here is how I would like you to set up that piece of paper. Great, so last time we were figuring out this question around what factors affect how many energy storage molecules producers are able to make. And we realized that producers are the ones that really can control how many energy storage molecules are in an ecosystem because producers are the ones making these energy storage molecules during that process of photosynthesis. And if we were going to change the output or the product of photosynthesis chemical reaction, then I really need to consider the inputs or the reactants that go into that process. Because again, I can't make matter, I can't destroy matter in a chemical reaction. So if I'm not getting enough energy storage molecules from photosynthesis, then there must be an issue with the reactants or the inputs in that process. When we played around in the sim, we noticed that when I decreased sunlight or decreased the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, that that created a decrease in the energy storage molecules that were produced. And if you were able to do the optional sim challenge in activity four, you notice that the opposite was also true. If I were to increase the amount of sunlight or increase the amount of available carbon dioxide, that my energy storage molecules as a result of photosynthesis also increased. These relationships are really important ideas and we wanna record them on that piece of paper that you have in front of you. And today we're gonna to be recording in total four different key concepts. I'm showing you two now. And in a moment, I'll be showing you two more. So on that paper, again, here is how I would like that to look so that we can reference these four concepts today as we work on using these relationships to help us think about what it means for our Econauts Biodome experiment. So let's go back and here's our first two. Pause the video as you need and record them on your sheet. I also encourage you to uh, record those images on your sheet as well as they help us visualize this relationship and connect it to what we're seeing in our sim and in our models. So our first key concept reads, when there is more carbon in the form of carbon dioxide in the abiotic matter, more carbon is available to producers for making energy storage molecules. And when there is less carbon in the form of carbon dioxide in abiotic matter, then there is less carbon available to producers for making energy storage molecules. Here's our next two concepts that again, we're gonna write down on our paper. Pause the video to give yourself time to do that. And again, I encourage you to record the image as well, because that helps us connect what we're seeing in these ideas to our SIM and our models. So our third key concept for today that we're writing down states that when there is more sunlight, producers can make more energy storage molecules from the carbon and carbon dioxide. And again, when there is less sunlight, producers cannot make as much energy storage molecules from the carbon in the carbon dioxide. Now we're gonna think about what these relationships mean for our energy storage molecules in the biodome of our econauts. So keep them in front of your paper. 
And let's go ahead and read our new message from Dr. Brian Corey to us as our student ecologists about what he may think is going on in the biodome. So his email to us reads, based on your investigation so far, it seems like there are two possible explanations for the plants and animals in the biodome not having enough energy storage molecules. Claim one is that a change in the amount of carbon dioxide led to a decrease in the amount of energy storage molecules made by the producers in the biodome. Claim number two is that a change in the amount of sunlight led to a decrease in the amount of energy storage molecules made by producers in the biodome. Before you share your findings with the Econauts, you'll need to decide which explanation is best. I'm sending along some data that may help you decide. After you examine the data, send a message to the Econauts with a visual model that we made last time, along with a written explanation. Before I open up the data that Dr. Brian Corey is sending us as student ecologists, I want you to just think for a moment, what kind of data would we need and what kind of patterns in that data would be helpful in us to determine which of these two claims will be accurate in what happened in our biodome experiment? Awesome, great ideas. So in a moment, I'm going to ask that you pause the video and I'm gonna make our data nice and big so that you can see it. And I want you to analyze this graph and consider these following questions. How has the amount of carbon dioxide changed over time? How has the amount of sunlight changed over time? How has the amount of water changed over time? And what do these changes mean, again, for our claims and for our failed biodome experiment of the Equinox? So go ahead, pause the video. There's our graph a little bit larger. When I was looking at this graph, I noticed a few things. I noticed that the amount of carbon dioxide over time was decreasing, was going down. And I noticed that the amount of sunlight and the amount of water was remaining fairly consistent over time because that line really wasn't increasing by much, going up, really wasn't decreasing by much, going down. It was pretty much staying flat and staying constant. Now that we have had an opportunity to consider the patterns in our data, we're going to reason about what those patterns mean for our two claims sent in Dr. Corey's email. To help us reason, we like to use this particular chart called a reasoning tool. And if you're familiar with Amplify, I'm sure you've seen this table before, this reasoning tool before in a past unit always starts with the evidence. Because as scientists, we don't just make up ideas. We consider the evidence that's available, the data that's available to us, and what that evidence means, and then connect it to an answer or to a claim. If you are working on Amplify Online, again, at the top of your screen is our lesson number and our activity, we're in activity three. So if you go there, you will see a digital version of your reasoning tool. And if you'd prefer to write your ideas out on paper or you don't have access to Amplify Online, I'd like you to please set up this three column chart, this three column table on your piece of paper in front of you, labeling your first column evidence, because that's where you're gonna summarize the evidence from our graph. Second column uh, with the sentence starter, this matters because, Here's where you're going to reason about what that evidence means. And then that final column stating therefore and referring back and writing out claim one or claim two. Remember, just writing claim one or claim two is not helpful because our Econauts or our audience might not know the claims that we're talking about. So we want to actually write them out. So take a moment to pause the video, refer back to our claims and our data as needed and complete your reasoning tool to connect evidence from the, from the graph, excuse me, and a claim that it supports. So how did you do? Here is how I filled out my reasoning tool. 
I stated that in the evidence, I noticed that the amount of carbon dioxide in the biodome decreased from year zero to year five. And I couldn't state in our graph exactly how much it decreased because I didn't have any uh, quantitative data on that part of my graph. I didn't have any numbers, but I did know the length of time. So I did include in my evidence zero to year five. So if you simply just said here that the amount of carbon dioxide decreased, please add from year zero to year five, because that is some of the quantitative data that we did get from the chart. I then reasoned that this particular pattern in our graph mattered because less carbon in the form of carbon dioxide was available for producers to make energy storage molecules during photosynthesis. And I right here referred back to one of those key ideas, those key concepts that we recorded earlier in the lesson today about how if I have less carbon from carbon dioxide, then I'm going to get less energy storage molecules from photosynthesis. And then I said in my therefore column that therefore a change in the amount of carbon dioxide led to a decrease in the amount of energy storage molecules made by the producers in the biodome. And according to my therefore, my claim column, I am stating that claim number one is the one that is best supported by the data. But again, notice in my reasoning tool, I didn't just write claim one. I wrote out what claim one actually is. And then even though we mentioned in our noticings of the graph earlier that sunlight and water remained the same, I did not include any of that evidence in my reasoning tool because it's not applicable to the claim um, at, that we were looking for as to why our energy storage molecules really did decrease. Now that we figured out all of this amazing stuff around photosynthesis and energy storage molecules and how to impact the amount of energy storage molecules, we are ready to answer our chapter one question that we've been working towards. And that question is, why didn't the plants and the animals in the biodome have enough energy storage molecules? We have evidence to support a claim for this, and we have key concepts that can help us reason out the answer for what that evidence means for our claims. So I would like you to pause the video and write an explanation to the Econauts why their plants and their animals in the biodome weren't getting enough energy storage molecules. We are in activity four online. If you would like to write out your response there, or you may do so on that paper in front of you. So when checking over your work, I want you to reflect on what you wrote and some of the sentence starters that I have here to make sure that your response to our chapter one question is really thorough and really clear in helping our Econauts understand this aspect of why their biodome experiment uh, didn't work in giving their plants and their animals enough energy to survive. So did you start off with a claim around why your plants and the animals did not get enough energy storage molecules? Did you reference your model and that graph as some evidence? And then did you provide some reasoning to say uh, why this all was occurring? Great work for today. You guys really figured out a whole lot of stuff and really helped make it clear to those Econauts this aspect of their biodome. So as we reflect today on chapter one, for next time, um, go ahead and review some of these vocabulary terms because I bet you used a lot of these words in your reasoning tool and in your model from last time and in your explanation to our chapter one question for today. And we're going to continue to see these terms as we move through this matter and energy and ecosystems unit and start chapter two next time. See you then.